Now, uh, from uh, Kenya here, I'm Edwin Kubaif. I work with the Ministry of Education in Kenya as a research and quality assurance officer. Now I'm going to look at uh, something very small about uh, research methodology and what we need about research methodology. Look at the definition and the structure of research process, research methods versus research methodology, steps for writing methodology, research methodology, and the critique on the research actually methodology that we should be looking at, which is very, very important for us. So the topic that is actually I'm going to discuss uh, today, this morning is about the significance of research methodology in writing academic papers. Research methodology forms part of your chapter three when you're writing either a proposal or you're writing a thesis or you're writing a project or you're writing a dissertation, something that you're going to write that you want to present before people, then research methodology will play a very significant role. So as a researcher or academician, you need to be very conversant, you need to be knowledgeable about which kind of methodology are you going to use in terms of uh, coming up with your paper. So it's very, very important you need to be having information about the area you want to, to do. Now, basically, we need to remind ourselves about what is research. And I think that research is a scientific and systematic search for pertinent information on a specific topic. For example, if you're looking at COVID-19, then that may be your topic of uh, study and then you narrow down to a specific issue about COVID-19. Either you want to look for how has it affected people worldwide or within a locality or within a community or within a country, then that will form part of it. So the advanced planner dictionary of current English defined research as a careful investigation or inquiry, especially through search of new facts in any branch of knowledge. So knowledge, actually research refers to systematic method consisting of initiating the problem. You must have a problem that you are going to look for solution. Then you formulate a hypothesis or you formulate questions that can be able to help you to solve those, uh, the topic or the problem, collect the facts or what you call the data, analyze these facts and reach certain conclusion, either in form of solution towards concerned problem or certain generalization for some theoretical formulation. So for those ones who are doing qualitative research, it means you may come up with either a solution to a given problem that is affecting the society or affecting a country or affecting a given uh, society nowadays that we live in. So it's very, very important to look at. So when you look at the structure of uh, research, so we're looking at in terms of uh, what is it that we are doing. When you're doing, uh, you're writing a paper, whether it is a thesis paper and so on, there is a process or the structure of doing, uh, writing that paper, which is very, very important. You must have the opening page, including all the relevant information about the thesis or the project you want to write. If you are writing to donors, you are looking for funds, then it's very, very important that uh, the title should be able to capture the donors and should be able to capture what the intended purpose for that research. The abstract is very, very important. Uh, an abstract is a pre-project summary, including the background and the methodology and the findings. So most of us are going to be presenting papers and you need to look at um, what is the background? What is the introduction part of your thesis or your paper that you're presenting? The methodology that you have used, which kind of methodology have you put in place and what are your findings or what are your conclusions in that context? Then the next one is the content. A list of chapters or figures contained in your thesis is very, very important. So you need to look at that. Then you have the chapter one, of course, you have talked about the background. We have chapter two, which is literature review. It's very, very important course. We are doing what you call research, it means you are only looking at the work that has already been searched or the work that already been, it is already in progress. So you're only trying to look for more information about this. So you need to carry out your literature review, intensive literature review about the area of study so that you have clear information what is being studied and so on. Then the next one is about methodology, which is very, very important that you need to decide which kind of methodology are you going to use? Because methodology, like if you're constructing a house, you must know. Which materials, how is the way? How are you going to finish that? You cannot start with the roof and yet you need to study the foundation. So in developing a paper, you must design the method that will lead to a solution of your research problem. And that means you should have what you call the methodology, the way that you're going to use. Then the chapter four to six talks about data analysis or so on, which you must look at which tools are you going to use in terms of analyzing your data whether it is a quantitative or whether it's qualitative data or mixed method approach and look, define the software that you may use to analyze that data. Chapter seven, we talk about discussion. 
which you can talk about your main conclusion first on your data, then you have uh, bibliography, and then you have the appendixes, which is very, very important. Now, on, risk, on, the, on the methodology part of it, is very, very important. You look about uh, the type of research design, whether it's quantitative, qualitative, or mixed method, then there's respondents, participants, sampling procedures, which methods are you going to use to collect the participants or to identify the participants that are going to participate in your study? Which sampling procedures are you going to use to be used in terms of your methodology? So methodology is a very significant chapter in what you call research work, which you must be able to, to identify which kind of methodology are you going to use. Then data collection, the instruments you're going to use, whether you're using the questionnaires, interview schedules, or you're using what you call observations, you must tell us which kind of uh, data collection tools are you using. Data analysis, tell us the procedures for data analysis. You're using the softwares, which kind of software are you using to analyze your data? And why are you using that specific softwares? Then some research also you must talk about, most of them you must talk about ethical considerations permission to conduct that research. Yeah, were you given the permission? If it's involving like experiments and so on, do you have uh, permissions to be able to consent from the participants to carry out the study? It's very, very important that you must be able to have ethical consideration when you're carrying, especially on the participants and you yourself as a researcher. It's very, very significant. <clears throat> so when you're writing a paper, we, there are several things that you need to be looking at. Which kind of paper are you writing? Is it a review paper? Is it an empirical paper? Is it a conference paper like the one you want to present in this conference? Or is it a scientific paper? Which kind of paper are you writing? So the moment you identify the paper, then you can now be able to know how to proceed and write that paper depending on the type of paper you are writing. If it's a paper for a conference, then you need to know the requirement for that conference. The convenience of the conference may have specific requirements. And in, you need to meet those requirements to be, make sure that your paper is within the context of those uh, requirements that actually that uh, the conveners of those conference have called for. If it's an empirical paper, it means it's a, a paper that uh, actually is a scientific paper that actually needs to be presented somewhere or is for academic purpose. So it means that you must present your data and the data must be valid in terms of uh, presentation and so on. So you must think yourself critically and read, go through literature review, analyze, try to find out which is the best way to be able to present your paper. Then the next one is to talk about is how do you write your research methodology? Because well, that is most significant, especially in your, all the areas are significant, but your research methodology will be able to help you in terms of getting solution to the problem you have identified in research. If you, are, you fail in research methodology, then it becomes very difficult for you to identify the correct way on how to get a solution. Because if you choose a wrong method, then you not solve the problem you have identified at the beginning. So it's good to have a good research methodology that you think will be able to help you in terms of getting the correct solution to the problem at hand that is facing either the community or the society you are living in. So the research methodology gives you the way. It opens the way and gives you the direction from step to step up to the time you get the conclusion. So a correct research methodology is very, very important in terms of identifying what you must be able to, to get a solution to the problem. So you need to mirror down and identify the correct research methodology for a given problem that you want to solve in the community or the society or where you are living right now and you're writing a paper that is going to be a solution or you're carrying on an experiment that is going to be a solution to that uh, given problem. So when we talk about research methodology, people normally confuse, especially novice research about what is methodology and what is research method. So it's good to distinguish between the two terms. We have what we call research methodology and we have what we call the research method. So methodology refers to the nuts and bolts of how a research study is undertaken. It's a way to systematically solve an under research problem. It can be understood as the process of studying how research is done in a scientific manner. So those systematic steps that you're going to follow in order to come up with a, a solution and it should be scientific way, then that's what you call a research methodology. But research methods are the tools that one uses to do research. For example, if you're doing qualitative or quantitative, or you're getting out a mixed method approach kind of research, then those are methods you're going to use. Either you may say that your, that your study is going to take either qualitative approach or your study is going to take quantitative approach or your study is going to take mixed, mixed method approach where you use both qualitative and quantitative approach. So it must tell us how you will do about it. So that is what you call research. 
But methodology, you are looking at the whole structure of solving the problem in terms of uh, systematically identifying the problem and coming up with methods of how to solve the problem in a systematic way. So that is what we call the research methodology. So it's very good if you are a researcher, you get a distinction between what is research methodology and what are the research methods that you're going to, to be using. You need to get the difference. So research methodology are just the methods the researchers used in performing research operation. Or you can talk about theory of how research should be undertaken. So those are very, very important terms of identifying your research. <laughs> then challenges, we're looking at the challenges actually that uh, face researchers when writing papers, which are some of these challenges that they face when you're writing uh, an academic paper. One is lack of scientific training. If you have not uh, gone before you undertake any research project, researchers should be well equipped with all the methodological aspects. So it is very important that you must have the methodology. How are you going to write your paper? It's very, very significant. Because once you have the no technical know-how, then it becomes very easy for you to construct any paper or write a paper that you want to present either in a conference or for the supervisors to look at it or for the granders. If you're writing for the donors, you want the grant and so on. It's very, very significant. You need to have scientific information. Lack of communication with the supervisors is also another factor. It is important to communicate with the supervisors to clarify the doubts regarding the research topic or to know what the supervisor expects you or to learn more about. For example, if you are, in, you are doing a PhD or doing a master's program, then very good to link up with the supervisor, find out how should you proceed in terms of uh, research methodology. Which kind of methodology is it convenient for the topic actually you have selected? Then you can have a discussion, be able to find out the need grid is how that methodology is going to help you solve the, the problem in terms of the research topic you have identified. Then if it's a conference, you need to link up with the, the organizer, the convenience of that conference, find out their needs and how they want it, the paper to be, to be written so that you must be able to know which kind of uh, paper are you writing and how should it be? What is the theme of the conference? So that you use your paper within that theme of the conference. If the theme of the conference is about humanities and social standards, is your paper within that framework and so on. If it's a multidisciplinary approach, they're looking at it. What is the theme for the conference so that your paper is within that? So you need to communicate between the you and look at the convenience of the conference so that you write a paper that actually can be accepted for publication by the convenience of that uh, conference like this, SOCH 2021. Time management is also a factor because you need to prepare early, organize yourself. How do you want to put things in order so that uh, you have a complete paper? Not having a definite deadline is also a problem that affects most researchers. Because you may find that you want to prepare or participate in a conference like this one, but you have not uh, designed a paper. You don't even have an abstract. You have not submitted anything. So it becomes very difficult. It's good to work within that context so that when you know the conference is on this particular date, then work on a paper that you make sure that by this time, at least you have something that you can be able to present uh, before that. So that when you want to participate in a conference, at least you have a paper at hand which is in line with the theme of the conference and the objectives of that given conference. Or if you are presenting for the supervisors, then you need to work within that deadline so that you can also be able to move on in terms of your graduation, or if you are, if you are doing for masters or PhD level, or you are just doing for presentation, then you can be able to do that. A quality of literature, you must be able to read. If you are looking at an area, a specific area, which is for example, nursing, then you must have known information about that nursing. What is the, what is the amount of literature there? what has been published and what are you contributing the body of knowledge that is still now existing? Which new information are you bringing on board in this case? That is something you need to be looking at. Then implementing quality of writing within the literature review. So you need to look at how are you improving the quality of writing? Because we have a lot of materials that has been published, but your work is to research and try to improve on what is already existing. So you need to look at the best way to be able to write your literature review. And this literature review should be able to help you develop what you call your research methodology. That's very, very significant in solving the problem at hand in terms of your research problem or your research topic. Insufficient data is another factor that actually have met uh, novice researchers to a challenge because if you don't have sufficient data, in terms of solving the problem, you need to look at how is your sample size, the data you are collecting. Is it sufficient? Like right now, we have uh, issues to do with COVID-19. We have uh, vaccines that have been carried down. So we look at the sample size. 
is the sample size enough for that vaccine to be used worldwide? So that is something that we need to be looking at. Because if you carry a small sample size, that's some, that's, if the, the smaller the sample size becomes difficult for the vaccine to be accepted. But the larger the sample size, it becomes very easy for you, for your study now to be accepted or even for generalization aspect of it, depending on the methodology of taken in terms of analyzing your data. Confidence is also very important when you are presenting. And I've seen you just here, they have actually, they have very good programs to build self-esteem, confidence in terms of paper presentation and how you own information. <clears throat> confidence comes in if you have done your work on your own. If this work, you have developed the paper on your own, then you can present that paper with a lot of confidence. But if that analysis or research methodology sections and analysis was done by somebody else or statisticians, and they gave you to present this work, it will be very difficult for you to present because you will not be able to understand that kind of analysis or the presentation or the outcomes of the, the analysis. So it's very good to do the analysis, have some skills, statistical skills in terms of knowing how to analyze data and how to write the research methodology chapter, which is chapter three that's very significant in terms of developing the outcomes. Concern that you focus is either still too broad or too narrow, so you need to Look at it, try to see how you're focusing your paper. Don't take too much white information or too narrow. Make sure that you're within the, the work. And the library, of course, help you to develop a good library management is very important in terms of helping you get access to resource materials that can help you develop a good uh, managerial skill in terms of research methodology. So steps for writing research methodology. We have uh, several steps that can guide you when you're writing research methodology. One, you must tell us about the introduction in that chapter three, your research methodology. Design the study and the organization of the chapter, research philosophy. Which philosophy are you basing your study on? It's very significant. Which philosophical assumption? Reflect on your beliefs, your assumption, to identify, explore, and analyze the challenge and develop and eventually declare them as your research philosophy. <coughs> Because for us to understand your study, we need to understand the underpinnings of your philosophical foundations. From which basis are you developing your study from? It's very, very significant. Is it from educational background? Is it from nursing background, medical background, engineering background, and so on? Human, human, or human, humanistic approach aspect of it, which kind of philosophy are you basing your study on? So that we can, from that perspective, if I go through your, your research paper, then I can be able to reason alongside with you, depending on your research philosophy. Now, the data that you need to look at the data, is it primary or second resource? First-hand information is the primary data, which is the raw data, or you're going to use the second-hand information with the, the second, or which is what you call the secondary data in terms of, collecting the data that you're going to analyze in your research methodology. Is it going to be quantitative, qualitative method, or both? What are you going to use in terms of research design? If you're analyzing your data, are you going to use quantitative, qualitative, or are you going to use both? Depend which kind of study are you going to carry? Is it going to be numerical or textual data? How do you handle subjectivity if it's a qualitative data? Because qualitative data is subject to subjective, because most of the issues are going to be handled by you as a researcher. How are you going to handle the aspect of subjectivity, which is very, very important as compared to quantitative where you have objectivity as opposed to subjectivity. So those are the issues that are critical that in terms when you are developing a research methodology section in a research paper that you must be able to look at in terms of analysis. Procedural methods they are very, very important. Provide an accurate and detailed account of the method and procedures were used in your study or experiment. Like if you're presenting a paper in this SOSH 2021 conference, then the most important thing people will be looking at, what are your procedures? What are the methods are you using terms to achieve to the conclusion? They are very significant and very, very important in terms of developing a scientific paper. Ethics. Ethics is very important because we're looking at how do you protect yourself as a researcher? And then you also need to protect the the participants who are going to participate in your study. If you're using human beings as a participant or using animals and so on, then the ethical part of it is very, very important. If you're carrying on a study that involves that, then you need to look at the ethical part of it. The standards of behavior that guide your contact in relation to the rights of those who become the subject of your work. Are they affected by your study? Because if you are doing like a vaccine, and this vaccine, you're studying a vaccine that uh, can be able to help in terms of uh, preventing the spread of COVID-19. If you give people that vaccine 
are going, uh, people going to be affected by that vaccine? Those are things to be looking at. So how, if you are studies about that vaccine in terms of prevention of COVID-19, or in terms of uh, stopping so that there's no spread of COVID-19, how is it? So that you need to look at the ethical aspects, very, very important when you're dealing with uh, research methodology. Justification. Why do you think the specific method is most appropriate for answering your research question or your hypothesis? If you're going to use, for example, qualitative or quantitative or both, why do you think so? You need to justify why you have selected a specific method. If it's even data analysis, you must specify which method of data analysis do you think is more appropriate? Why are you selecting that method to under the space? You need to justify. In research, the most important thing to do in research is to try as much as possible to justify each and every step you're taking in terms of developing your research methodology. Because I think that uh, our Edwin Kumaisor is facing some problem in his country due to internet connection. And uh, sorry, again, we share the screen. And uh, sorry, we are seeing the last part of this presentation. And uh, we will have uh, another presentation by our speaker. I mean, the speakers are here. We will have the presentation by Dr. Amin Rajasthan from University of Hyderabad. Then thereafter, we will have the presentation by our professor. Uh, and Dr. Kathleen and Rizal, sir. Hereafter, we will have a presentation by Professor Dr. Ramesh Sundarat, sir. So we have numbers of speakers with us, and uh, I would like to unmute our Edwin Kubai, sir. I think that sir is facing some problem. Uh, sir, you can share the screen. You can go for completing your presentation. Sorry for the interruption of the internet connectivity. I was uh, disconnected. Yes, yes, we can understand some. Sometimes in Kenya that uh, you are facing from the internet issue. So that was one presentation. And I think that uh, our researcher, those who are young researchers, they are facing the problem regarding their research and maximum. It's okay, I'm good. It's okay, thank you. I can uh, continue. Yes, please. Okay, thank you. Now we were looking at uh, steps for writing a research methodology. So I was talking about ethics and justification that's very, very important, significant in terms of whether you have which kind of method that's very significant. Then limitation and the limitation, constraints. You need to identify the limitations and the limitations that are there in your study. What are some of the constraints that are outside the control of your research and will affect the outcome of the, the research in terms of generalizability, validity and reliability? The limitations are intentional choice of the researcher as to the boundary of study. Which kind of area have you selected? And why did you select that location? Why do you select the population and so on? Those are what you call the limitations that you need to be looking at in terms of your study. And this one, you now you need, to, you need to inform the respondents. Why did you select that and so on? Then come up with a conclusion, summarize the major finding of your research methodology. It's more significant in terms of coming up because the conclusion is a summary of the major finding of your study which is very very important so then you need to identify or critique method of research that's very very important so you need to find the research method in a really specific way find the research method in a research paper that should include rationale as why you are studying that then ask yourself whether the method used makes sense in answering the research question match the research question with others conclusion be aware of the most common methodological errors. Why were some questions not answered when you carried uh, either research and so on? If you had, for example, three objectives, did you respond to all the objectives? So it is good to critique your own method of study. It's good to carry out a critique, identify the flaws that may be there in your method that actually you have taken in terms of answering your research question. They are very, very important. Examine the researcher's conclusion from a broad perspective. Is the study make significant conclusion to the existing body of knowledge. If you are study, you are coming up with a study. Is it solving or adding value to the existing body of knowledge that we have? If it is not, then there is a problem in your 
either research method or you do not carry out your literature review in extensive way. So it's very, very important that you must make sure you have that. So for those who are novice researchers, we have different components of research methodology. We may follow depending on your area of specialization. So we have what you call the research design, which is the structure to plan and execute a particular research. We have the sample sampling techniques of a population or study area. We have the research instruments. We have reliability and validation, which is also very important. We have what you call reliability and validation of research instruments. So it's very, very important. So when you're carrying out the component of research, you must tell us what is your research design? What are the sampling techniques or the sampling procedures? What is your research instrument? What is your reliability and validation of research instruments and so on? Data collection method you used and data analysis procedures that actually you used. So it's very, very important. You must be able to tell us that. So thank you very much for listening. And uh, that is my presentation. So thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you very much, and big man for our admin advisor, research officer from Ministry of Higher Education, Kenya. And we have seen that admin advisor made one brilliant presentation in this paper. And we would like to congratulate our advisor for addressing such a very important point for the research and academics in this paper. Thank you very much, sir, for your support, contribution, and your presentation in this paper. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, sir, from Kenya. So we have seen that our admin advisor from Kenya made a wonderful presentation. And now this is time to move forward and we will have our next presentation by our Dr. Amen Rajesh sir from University of Hyderabad from Central University from India. And we would like to welcome our Dr. Amen Rajesh sir with the big hand from our side. And I would like to share here that whenever our um, does sir sharing his screen and uh, sharing his presentation? We are all fond of him because he is coming with the wonderful slide, unique idea, and unique style of presentation. I hope today we will all enjoy the presentation of our Dr. Amin Rajester in this warm summit source 2021. Thank you, and over to our Dr. Amin Rajas, a very good morning, sir, and welcome to SOS 2021. Good morning, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rituraj Saikya, sir. And then thank you, Mr. Edwin Kobai, sir, and my preceding speaker. And today I'll be speaking on something related to climate change, which is an integral part of social science. Sir, should I play the PowerPoint or will you uh, play the PowerPoint, sir? Uh, you can share the screen, sir. Okay, I'll share the screen. Okay. Just give me one minute.